Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to talk about something that I'm writing about right now, and so I'd like to uh, include you in the conversation. And that's um, about regulating your autonomic nervous system, primarily your sympathetic nervous system. So like, I've talked about this uh, before in the in these calls, and so I'm going to be going to be brief. But the uh, the autonomic nervous system is the part of your nervous system that handles the more or less automatic stuff uh, in your body mind. You know, it uh, regulates the things that are that you don't want to have to think about all the time. Things like beating your heart or breathing, stuff like that. So your um, uh, your endocrine functions. Uh, so your autonomic nervous system is set up so that it interfaces with your endocrines, that is, you know, your hormones, to be able to regulate your body and make uh, make things work. And the autonomic nervous system is divided into two primary parts. There's actually a third, which we're not going to talk about because it's the uh, it doesn't really concern us in this conversation. But the uh, two primary parts are the are the parasympathetic nervous system, which is has been called the uh, rest and digest mode, and it it's where you gather in energy, you slow everything down. That's when we go into a deep sleep, we're in a, heavily into a parasympathetic state. So the heart rate lowers, the um, breathing calms down, the uh, blood flow moves, moves more toward the center of your body. And it, you, you're gathering energy at that point. The sympathetic nervous system is the go, go, go part. That's the part when... It, you're doing anything, you're in the sympathetic nervous system. So it's the um, energy out part. So energy expenditure. They're designed to kind of do this little seesaw where you gather energy in, you fill up the, t the car with gas, then you drive somewhere. And it kind of works, works nicely that way when they're, when they're in balance. When they're out of balance, then mischief happens. Uh, that's whenever, you know, things get stuck one way or the other. But usually it's in the, toward the sympathetic. That is, we're under so much stress that we are constantly go, 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 and we never really get a chance to rest and relax. And so when that happens over a sustained period of time, we get probably, some estimates say about 70% of the mental and physical health issues stem from that, from an, autom from, an, from an autonomic nervous system imbalance. That is, over time, if we continue to put stress on the body without, without replenishing, without slowing down and gathering in energy, then eventually things start to break down. And that's when we get in all kinds of, of difficulties, and including mental health problems where people get like very anxious or depressed or, or whatever because they've They've uh, exhausted their body's ability to respond to the day-to-day -day stresses of life. So the uh, um, the sympathetic nervous system is what I want to focus on today. I want to focus on primarily how to how to disentangle your sympathetic nervous system from your stress response. And the reason why I say that is. The um, you, all you have to do is just do a Google search on sympathetic nervous system and stress response, response, and you'll see that it's the two are pretty solidly linked in the co the conversation, the the broader conversation. Any medical literature is going to have a heavy emphasis on that. You know, if you look at the Cleveland Clinic or the WebMD, MD, anything like that, that's their go to place. Like. The sympathetic nervous system and the stress response are kind of locked in there. And so that actually plays out in my experience in, in life with a lot of things, with people. That's they, there's a tendency that 
if you want to do something, there's a, that moment of initiation is kind of a, a gearing up your to do it. And there's a you know, kind of a, a self-induced stress response that occurs in order to get things activated. You got to kickstart yourself in order to get something done. And you can, you know, things that you can see with, uh, you know, with the sympathetic nervous system, there's an elevated heart rate, the, the, um, the blood vessels dilate, the blood pressure goes up, there's a, uh, the blood flow goes to the extremities, you're, you're ready for action. And uh, so this is something that's, it's actually happening with each breath. Each time you inhale, you are creating a sympathetic nervous system response. And your heart rate will accelerate a little bit as you inhale. As you exhale, it calms down a little bit. And so if you want to really get your your uh, parasympathetic going, then you want to focus on the exhale. Also, the chest breathing. If you breathe shallowly into the thoracic area, you'll get more of a sympathetic nervous system response. And that's why when people get the, they're under stress, they'll, they'll pant because that's, that's a sympathetic nervous system response. Whereas if you're breathing deep into your belly and uh, calmly and you're exhaling a nice long sustained exhale, then you're going to get more of a parasympathetic response. It will calm things down. So uh, there's uh, getting the disambiguating the Sympathetic nervous system from the stress response is something that we do in Tai Chi Chuan. We learn to move without creating an undue stress response in our bodies. And oftentimes, though, we if we get really caught up in like, oh, am I doing this right? And putting ourselves under pressure to do exactly correctly, like my teacher showed me or whatever, we can actually create a sense of urgency in our own body mind and and even though we're doing something that is should be a nice relaxed balanced activity we can actually kind of tip it in the direction of the sympathetic because it is we're getting a um, uh, a, a self-induced stress response in that situation so learning how to to be able to move, and disconnect from that. So learning to activate your sensory, your sympathetic nervous system without um, the stress response is a large part of what we're doing in, in Tai Chi Tran. We're learning how to uh, move smoothly, gracefully, relaxedly, flowingly, and disconnect from that without necessarily going to the parasympathetic or overly to the parasympathetic. A lot of people, their solution to an exaggerated sympathetic nervous system is to say, you know, either just sit in a chair and pop a beer or they'll, uh, you know, you can meditate and, and get into a very heavily parasympathetic state. You have to slow everything down and that gathers energy and that's great. But, um, Sometimes you got to move and to be able to move efficiently without creating that the artificial stress response is the name of the game here. So we're going to do a few things here to get control of our sympathetic nervous system. And by, uh, by association, we'll also be strengthening our parasympathetic, but that's not going to be our primary focus. Our primary focus is going to be on, on getting it all going together. So first, let's start with a, uh, a, um, a breathing exercise, very simple one. You know, some people call it uh, square breathing. 
And the idea here is we're going to try to balance the sympathetic nervous system with the parasympathetic by using our breath. Since every inhale stimulates the sympathetic, every exhale, the parasympathetic, if we kind of get them evened out, we're breathing diaphragmatically, then we're going to get, we're going to calm things down and, and restore a, a balance to it. The more you do this, the more familiar your body mind gets with that state. And it starts to reset because a lot of us are, are set with like a, like with the with the idle really really high on the, like a, an idle on a car is what what happens when the car is not moving but the car the engine's on and the number of rpms that of the that the engine is uh, is is going through is is its idle so if you're you want it to idle you know like 750 or something like that and but if you're up to like around 3000 or something cuz you're really revved up and you're you know, really, your whole system is excited. Then it uh, it's exhausting. You're not you're not getting that that balance there. So you want to be able to slow down your body mind, slow down your idle to a nice, relaxed, comfortable kind of kind of state. So the 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 deal is, we're going to inhale for a count of four. Breathe in through the nose. Put your tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth. So the um, this is all inhale and exhale through the nose. And you actually want to feel, you know, the uh, the breath as it enters, goes through your nasal passages and enters in, into your sinus cavities. And as we discussed uh, a few weeks ago, this actually increases the nitric oxide flow in the, in the body. And uh, we're not going to get into that right now, but this uh, enhances health and and uh, uh, vitality on many different levels. But right now, just, just get the feeling as you inhale, you're feeling it, you know, drawing it into this area around your third eye area. And this has a, a positive effect. Then when you exhale, you breathe out through the nose, but all of it's happening uh, diaphragmatically. And uh, we have, there are other exercises where we can amplify this, but we're just going to start with a simple one today. So, so let's, uh, let's do that. So, uh, inhale through the nose, one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale through the nose, two, three, four, hold, two, three, Four. And that holding at the exhale really calms down the, the body and moves you into that parasympathetic. Let's do that again. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, and continue with your own count. I'm just going to do a few more of these. And one more. Great. Notice how the, what effect that has on your body mind. I know for me, it has sort of a calming, centered, but very alert kind of feel there's a, a sense of, of, of balance that, that is occurring. 
So, um, going forward from there, another way of, uh, of controlling your, regulating your autonomic nervous system is to uh, learn to, to do things without stressing, do things in a very relaxed, easy way that, you know, any, and so you're, you're consciously activating your, your sympathetic nervous system to do stuff, but you're not stressing out about it. And so the, uh, you know, one thing that we've, uh, one thing I've been emphasizing for a long time, and I believe is very, very deeply, and that is that we all have the capacity for a for super consciousness, that is body, mind, spirit integration. And it's something that, you know, I've been showing lots of tricks to get there into a super conscious state. So it's something that we all can do, and actually very, very quickly. But the one thing I run into with people is they say, yeah, but I don't. I don't remember to do it. And even though it's something as simple, and the, the one thing that, you know, I've started this whole conversation with years ago was, you know, pointing and reaching with your index finger and feeling that. So this conscious feeling and doing here of just pointing and reaching with your index finger immediately creates this super conscious state. And it lasts for however, you know, a moment or a minute or longer. And but it initiates that, that process, that super consciousness process. But the one barrier that I, I, I see for a lot of people is the fact that there is this pre-conscious activity at the autonomic nervous system level. It's pre-conscious activity, which they are not in control of, which is kind of running them. And so the, the in those moments of stress, the fight, flight, freeze kicks in, and they do things which are not oftentimes in their best interest. And, and even if they are in their best interest, they're, they're still done with this kind of tension and, uh, and anxiousness about it. So the, uh, as a way of, of doing things in a super conscious state, we're just going to do this this uh, next little exercise. And um, so the, um, uh, put your hands in your lap and uh, you're gonna take a, a deep breath. And relax. And very simply, just lift the index finger on your right hand. Just, just point and reach with that. Just pick it up and, and extend that. And just feel into that. And then put it down. So immediately that, that creates this, this super conscious state that, that your body, mind, spirit integration, the mind clears, Everything gets integrated. So now we're gonna pick up your middle finger of your right hand and feel that, and then put that down. Now pick up your ring finger and put that down. And I guess one thing I, I, I'm doing, I should mention it, is each time I'm doing these things, I take a breath, right? So I take a breath and lift up my little finger and then exhale and put the finger down. So what we did here is something stupid simple. That is, pick up your finger. and But it gives the body mind a chance to see that, oh, I did that without tensing up. Yeah, it was simple, but it's a start. It starts the conversation. A lot of what I, I do in a way I teach is, is to like, how can we break these things down that are accessible to everybody? Because then we can get, you know, we can get that get that conversation going. So 
you do with your left hand. So uh, this time you're going to pick up your thumb of your left hand. Inhale. And exhale, put your thumb down. And very consciously, very deliberately feeling each way. You're going to pick up your the index finger of your left hand. And then put that down. Exhale. That conscious feeling and doing is what is creating this, this super conscious state. Pick up your middle finger. Feel that. Exhale. Put that down. Pick up your little finger. From your ring finger. Exhale. Put that down. Pick up the little finger of your left hand. And then put that down. Now press down with the big toe of your right foot. And then let that go and exhale. And press down with all the toes of your right foot. Inhale. Feel that. And then exhale. Now press down with your the um, big toe of your left foot. Inhale. And exhale. Release that. Press down with all the toes of your left foot. Inhale. And exhale. Now, and just feel it in your body right now and just notice that relaxed, calm, centered, balanced way that you're feeling right now. There's an alertness there. There's a sense of, of unity in the whole body-mind. There's a, a super consciousness prevails over the whole system. And so, well, this, as I say, it's stupid simple, but it's something also that you can do any point during your day when you're you're late for an appointment, you're you have to take an important phone call, whatever. You're you find yourself kind of getting a little amped up. All you have to do is to consciously override the that impulse, that stress response by consciously feeling and doing as you do something. You press down, press down with your finger, or you take two fingers and put them together. Anything you want to do that activates, that is a doing, a conscious doing will make this jump for you. So I've, for years I've been telling people, point and reach with your index finger. Sometimes that's, that's a little awkward. Sometimes you don't want to do that. But, you know, you just press down with your toes and immediately your mind clears and you start to shift. Depending on how deep, big the stress is, it may, it may handle the whole thing or may just give you a foot in the door so that you can, you can start to work it. But the um, consciously feeling and doing starts this this process in any situation. So now we're going to stand up and uh, this one also can be done seated, but uh, uh, I'm going to do it standing up and uh, I'm going to take this and we're going to raise the bar a little bit so that we're going to start to apply this same principle to something that's a little more challenging than than just lifting a finger. Okay, so why don't you stand up?
Okay. Ah, so step out. And uh, let's start by feeling into our three pillars. Feel the the ball to your feet. You want to feel that, but feel the the weight spread throughout your foot. Feel in your heels. You can press down with your toes. Imagine everything. Just notice it by just by doing that. You are there's a conscious doing there, and you're activating your superconscious. Reach for the crown of your head. Tuck in your chin. Oops. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Um, tuck in your chin and open your jade pillow gate. Feel the connection between the feet and you know, the crown of your head. Feel the lengthening of your body as you hold those poles in opposition. And feel the energy circulating and <clears throat> moving through you as you tap into the big chi. Your earth chi rising through the balls of your feet. Heaven chi coming down through the, the bai hui point at the, the top of your head. And relax your lower back. Allow your sacrum to drop. Get very calm, relaxed, centered. Feel your central equilibrium. Just relax your hips, turn nice and easy. Just, uh, just to let go of any hip tension and feel yourself sinking even more into the earth. Reaching up even more with the crown of your head. Point and reach with your index fingers and feel your energetic coherence throughout your whole body. Reach with your elbows and open your shoulder joints. Unkink the hose in your shoulders. And notice that you're already getting a, uh, a substantial amount of chi flow feel it in your hands. Feel the pulsing and tingling So we've already activated our superconscious state. We've opened up to the big chi. So there's a lot of energy moving through. And now we're going to take that and we're going to move with it in a very conscious, deliberate way. So the the game plan here is to very slowly you uh, can move your arms overhead like this, moving out to the side and up, reaching up overhead and reaching up there, okay, and then down. That's the that's the short answer. The long answer is we're going to take ten breaths to get up there and hold for five, reaching up and then 10 breaths coming down. And so the game here is to sustain our intention and attention as we are executing this in a very relaxed, comfortable way. You wanna feel like your arms are floating up. And what I found it helps to reach with the wrists I let your fingers just sort of get nice and relaxed as you're as you're coming up. So you feel like your your fingers are being pulled up like on strings. You know, they're they're lifting up and then and then you reach up like that. Okay. So the so so we're going to uh, we're gonna do it. I'll count out the breaths. Nice and easy, slow and deliberate, but sustain. And here where the exercise is to maintain that sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system activity, 
that is the doing, but not stressing it. In fact, the opposite, just kind of kind of digging it. All right, here we go. So inhale, deep breath. And exhale, one. Two. Three. Six, seven, eight, nine. And bring your hands together, your head, and sink down with the lower half of your body as you reach up with your with your hands. So you're pointing and reaching upward. Sink and one, two. Five. Separate your hands and one. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and ten. Let's hold that posture. Breathe naturally and feel into your body. Feel the blood in your veins. Feel your skin. Feel your breath. Feel your breath in your nose and your nasal passages. Feel your breath in your belly, your diaphragm, in your lungs.
La PN Deep breath, going the ball to your feet, coming up. Into your heels and exhale, disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness. Right. Now let's uh, do something else. Let's do something different. We're going to take that same principle and we're going to up the complexity a little bit more, a little more challenging. Still the same idea, though. We're doing it effortlessly, flowing. It's almost like it's being done to us. It's so soft, the power is so effortless. And we're going to do a, uh, a Tai Chi move, uh, wave, wave hands like clouds or cloud hands. And just start with the feet about, about a hip width, maybe a little, it looks about a hip width is good. And the basic idea here is that we're going to turn to the left, and reach with the right hand, and then turn to the right. Okay. So that's the that's the thing. The uh, we're gonna do it ten breaths, just so we can get really get into the feeling of it. Slow everything way down. Get very, very, very mindful of our internal state. The Chinese term for this is nei shi, which is that internal seeing or inward looking that is your attention is on what's happening inside your inside your skin not so much with your external environment more on your internal environment and the more we develop our neishi the by first focusing on the substantial aspects the solid stuff we then become more attuned to the insubstantial non-stuff that's happening that makes the stuff work. So that means our chi, our shen, our spirit, our you know the our intention. All these things are non-stuff. They're not they're not solid, but they have their own. Um, Uh, even the non-stuff has a certain stuff to it. That is, but it's a very insubstantial stuff. And so it's only by comparison, like say uh, your energy is more solid than your thoughts. And so then you can kind of play around with, with these ideas. But let's just really focus on feeling the stuff here, the, the body. You're going to spiral down to the you feel the ball of your left foot spiral down to the right and then turn to your left and your right hand very slowly comes up. You're breathing. Breathe. Now you sink into your right foot for and turn to the right, five, six, that 10 reaches seven, eight, nine, 
10. And going back the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and back again, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, open. Hands come down. Step in. Deep breath. Same thing. Feel your arm just floating up. And exhale, sink into your heels and disappear the chi. Please have a seat. How was that? <laughs> Good.
Uh, any thoughts, any things, you, observations, anything you want to share with the people? He wants us to talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sharon. I found it very challenging to take so many breaths. I wanted to have long, much longer inhales and longer exhales. And when you do it by yourself, you get to do that. Okay. So, yeah, you know, so you get to you get to take as long as you like. You know, I was just trying to, you know, fit it in for the for the camera here. You know, to uh, to make it flow a little bit. So, but uh, you, you, uh, that that's a good point. I and you're right. I I found myself on particularly on that second pass through to the left there. I found found myself speeding up a little too fast and had to kind of cram it all in. So uh, the one uh, of you know, when I'm doing it by myself, I just, oh, nice and easy. And, you know, I can take forever just make one one movement, you know, one ward off left or whatever. I just, it, uh, the important thing is, you know, that point of emphasis there that, you know, am I flowing with this? Am I consciously engaged with this process? each step of the way. Valerie. Um, <clears throat> well, with each side, I think we did it three times, something like that, four. Well, it was progressively easier, you know, just getting into the rhythm of that slowness. You were counting, but I was breathing. You know, I didn't stop breathing. I was very conscious of my breath. Um, so, you know, I would say to Sharon. Yeah. Just as many. It's an arbitrary breathe. number. I just pulled it out. Right. Just to, right. To say, you know, you know, particularly for people uh, who breathe faster, you know, that, you know, good. To, you can do it for five. You can do it for whatever, you know. It, it, the important thing is, am I slowly executing this thing? very deliberately, very mindfully. Yes, and I feel I was, and therefore each pass, I was more into it and able to slow down even more. And um, it was, very, I've done this sort of thing in the past um, and it was very stressful. <laughs> Because like we'd end up trying to balance with one foot in the air, blah, blah. And that was stressful. Um, but this made it very easy. I wasn't in this, you know, I was in the sympathetic, but without that fight or flight feeling, right. you know, right. it was very smooth, very like butter. You know, it was just uh, a really, really nice experience and I will have to go back to the breathing that we did in the very beginning I've been working with that uh since you you know brought that whole thing up uh, in Sedona and I'm very happy that there's all these other health benefits but the calming for me has just been really really nice mm. um i mean i've done other breathing things but i don't know why this time maybe the right time right place but it really has uh that a deep calming effect for nice. me yeah you know for me knowing why it works is it helps me to do it you know if someone says, do this thing, Rick, and, you know, and it's good for you, I'll do it. I'll try it and say, yeah, that's nice. But I may not go back again. But they say, well, here's what's happening. You know, as you do this thing, you know, you are taking control of your autonomic nervous system. And and this has application in everything. It's like, oh, well, I'm paying attention now. Yeah. And that's, you know, for, for me, that's that it works better that way. 
that's not necessarily true of other people. It's like, just shut up, just tell me what to do and I'll do it, you know. And that 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 worked for other people. But for me, it's like, no, no, how does this thing work? And uh, and that's why I try to share it with people. And that's, um, you know, that's why this, why we're having this conversation. And I think that's a much more, um, I don't want to use the word intelligent, uh, thoughtful way of approaching things, at least for me, is to know, you know, okay, I'm seeing somebody do it and it looks like it works, but if it doesn't work for me, it doesn't mean anything. And I think the explanation um, that you give is is very helpful, you know, because then it's just not some woo magic stuff, you know. I mean, it is magic, but it is magic, but it's you know, indistinguishable from a sufficiently advanced technology. Yes. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur C. Clarke. Uh, uh, Debbie. I was surprised at how, um, how light my arms were. I expected going that slow that I would, they would feel heavier than usual. And um, I felt them a lot less than I feel just, you know, doing my normal, um, moving hands like clouds. So it was the the breathing and the focus on on that seemed to just create a different type of energy than I'm used to. So that was just very interesting to me. Great, thank you. That's great. Beautiful. Scott. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, before class, you know, I just got home from work. So I'm always a little tired and I was joining through all the sitting down exercises and yawning through half of the stand up exercises, but I eventually got to a place where I'm kind of balanced. Like, you know, yeah, I'm still a little tired, but I'm not I, I'm much more, I'm not in that. I need a nap. Well, like I felt when I started, I'm just really chill now. Nice. Yeah, so it kind of I could definitely feel a bit of a balance there. Great, great. Yeah, that's that's what we're aiming for. Relax but energize at the same time. So you're you know, you're able to to do stuff or not. And you know, in that in that nice place. And then you can crank up either side, the sympathetic or the parasympathetic, depending on what you're looking for. You know, if I'm going to sleep at night, I'm I'm inviting that parasympathetic in. Say, come on in, buddy. You know, that's 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 what I'm looking for. You know, and uh, if I'm playing tennis, I there's no time for that. Mm -hmm. Go go go. You know. <laughs> so yes, but being able to consciously do is uh, is a game changer. Cool. Definitely. Anybody else? And just definitely had to be really. Um... When we arms over the head, as soon as my arms got to shoulder shoulder height, I really had a, you know, really had a focus on not tensing up and just right, right, because that's that's an odd that's, that's an odd odd place to be, but to be able to feel your arm being pulled up, you know, as you go there, it's like it's it's kind of liberating. Yes. Yeah, I was just going to say it's really valuable to notice when your stress response kicks in when you're doing mm. something slowly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, especially like Scott saying, the hand coming above the head, you notice when something starts to tense, what's tensing, right. so that you can then see if you can breathe in and relax it. Uh, but it's really important to be able to note mm -hmm. when, what movement, you know, kicks that in. Yeah. And yeah. From, from my own personal experience, there have been years where where I couldn't raise my arms. My my shoulders were so messed up from rotator cuff tears and all kinds of injuries that I picked up along the way that I couldn't raise my arms above here without extreme pain. Mm -hmm. You know, and that you know, for, for years I went that but here I am, like there my my arms are in my shoulders are in the best shape they've been in in you know 35 40 years and uh having getting the chi moving through has this capacity to rehabilitate our motion and uh, our capacity to to uh 
to move, to rehabilitate our, our joints and our connective tissue. It takes a little while to, uh, to do it, but um, uh, this is, this is a, a nice way of getting there. Okay, so thank you all so much. I'm getting the signal that it's time. So uh, uh, appreciate it. And uh, thank you, producer. Thank and you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Maria, an early happy birthday. Oh, yes. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Maria. Yes, uh, on Friday. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Maria. So, yes. Uh, thank you all. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you guys.